Daniel chapter 2, go there in your Bible. If you missed last week, we started a study out of the book of Daniel where we are as a church going to be diving into this Old Testament book. If you don't know what that means, the Bible is divided in half. There's Old Testament that's pre-Jesus, and then there's New Testament that's once the cross or the message of Jesus is realized. The Old Testament is the law. If you work hard, you can be in, in good with God. The New Testament is all about believing. If you believe in Jesus, you are in good with God. Anybody thankful today we're not under the law, but we are now under the canopy of grace. So some of this is Old Testament thinking and language, but nevertheless, every single scripture is for our benefit. In fact, the Bible says of the Bible, you don't got to add to it or subtract from it. You can live on it forever. In fact, the Bible says of the Bible, the grass may wither and the flower may fade, but the word of the Lord will last siempre. Don't make me preach in Spanish. And so there's an Old Testament book, and Daniel, I love his name, his name means God is my judge. And one of the things you're going to see from the life of Daniel is that Daniel does not live for the opinions of man. He has, he has summarized his life to only live for the opinion of God. I want to encourage you, do not live for man's praise. If you live by their praise, you will die by their criticism. We do not live on what people think about us. The Bible says it this way, the fear of man is a trap. Other translations say a snare. So when you care about what others think, you are trapped in their opinions. But when you only care about what God thinks, you have the fear of God, not the fear of man. Daniel exhibits this. Daniel don't care what nobody says. Even if it's a king or an emperor, he will not bow his knee to culture. He will only bow his knee to God. Because God is my judge. And if you didn't know this at this time, the Israelites are in exile. They're in captivity. They've been taken from their town and they are now living in Babylon. They're under the rulership, or shall we call it the, the dictatorship, of a, a man named Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had summoned for the brightest and the best in his land. He's looking for like the Yale and the Harvard students of Babylon. He wants the brightest and the best to come and for three years do an internship so that they can study and learn and then they could be a voice to him about what the government should do. He figures, I'm pulling out the best of the best in Babylon. There might be some of these Jewish kids that might be favorable for our nation. So he chooses four Israelites, four teenage kids that are Jewish. Their names are Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Daniel's kind of like the leader of the four. And he's the spokesperson. It comes in Daniel chapter 1 that he's where we get the fast, the Daniel fast. That for 10 days he said, don't give us anything but fruits. If it's not from air one, we don't want it. So for 10 days he does this and they are found to be brighter and smarter than the rest of the sharp ones from Babylon. In chapter number 2, we see right away, you cannot make this up that we just watched a clip about a dream, and Daniel chapter 2, verse 1, is about a dream. Watch this, Daniel chapter 2, verse number 1, and watch what it says. Now, in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the command to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Harry Potters and the Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I have had a dream. And my spirit is anxious to know the dream. I want to preach a message today. Write down the title. It was all a dream. Julia was like, you're not going to mention Biggie, right? When you say that. And I was like, no, stop. I'm from the 90s, but it was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine Salt and pepper, heavy D up in the limousine, hanging pictures up my wall. I would, anyways, I'm kidding. Have you ever had a dream? Have you ever had a dream and you woke up and you're like, okay, how did they get my dream? And how do I uninvite them from my dream? 
Like, I get certain people being in my dream because, like, we hung out last week or, like, I thought about them or I follow them on social. But when a rando shows up in my dream, I'm like, wait, what, what in the world? What, what's going on here? King Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream, and he cannot figure it out. Like, this dream is so moving that he's like, um, what was that? What just happened? So he calls the best and the brightest, the magicians, the enchanters, Harry, the, all the guys. And he's like, somebody figure out my dream. By the way, let me just encourage a few people here while you're fasting and praying because I do believe that God speaks in dreams. God speaks in vision. God speaks in pictures. So some of you need to recognize that sometimes God is speaking to you in a dream. Or other times when you can't sleep, maybe it's God that's keeping you up in the middle of the night because God wants to talk to you like he did want to talk to Samuel in the Bible. So we need to recognize that sometimes the reason why you don't have sleep is because God is trying to talk to you about your life. He's trying to talk to you about your future. He's trying to get you to do something or he's trying to get you to stop doing something. I wear an aura ring, A-U-O-R-A. I wear an aura ring in every uh, morning. Sorry, O-U-R-A. Uh, I added an A. Like, what are you, Canadian, my guy? Anyways, but um, every day this thing tracks how many steps I take. And, and so all my activity, and it, and it tracks my sleep. And so every morning I love to check and see how I did last night in my sleep. And so it tells me like how my REM was and how much time I slept and how long I was in deep sleep. And, and, and every day this thing tells me I was in optimal sleep, optimal. Like your boy, because I always thought about that scripture when the Bible says he gives sleeps to the one, he gives sleep to the one that he loves. So every day I look at that, I'm like, ah, he loves me. And then I go over to Julia, I'm like, hey, how'd you do? And she's like, oh, didn't fall asleep till 2.30 and I was up at six with the kids and did that. And I'm like, oh. But the one that he loves slept great. Look at the app. Sometimes when you're not sleeping, could it be that God's trying to be talking? Nebuchadnezzar recognizes, he's not even a believer, he recognizes this is not normal. This dream I had was not pizza. This, 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 this is, this is, somebody needs to come interpret this dream. Calls the best and the brightest to the stage. He says, y'all need to interpret what just went down because what I just dreamt is not a normal dream. This is not good. Whatever it is, this is not good. What's the first thing that the wisest Babylonians have to say to the king? Look at verse 11. It says, what the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods. And they do not live among humans. This made the king so angry. And furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. Write down point number one today. What's impossible for man is possible for God. What these guys are saying is true. What the king asks is impossible. What the king is asking a man to do, no human can do. Only a God can do that. They rightly confess that humans are incapable of doing supernatural power. They rightly confess only a God can do that. I want to tell you today, what man cannot do, our God can. And when God starts getting a hold of your life, what seems, listen, in your own strength, you cannot break that addiction. In your own strength, you cannot forgive the person that abused and abandoned you. In your own strength, you cannot build that company. In your own strength, you cannot do what you're called to do. But my Bible says what is important possible for man is possible for God. Look at Mark 10, 27, Jesus speaking. With man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. I don't care how broken you are. You are not so broken that my God can't put you back together. I don't care how bad that relationship is. It is not that bad that our God can't bring reconciliation. I don't care where you've gone and what you've done. You are not that far away from the grace and the goodness of God. It might be impossible for you, but it's not possible for God. And when God, see, I think you got to start baking in the God factor into your life. 
If the God factor is not there, you'll never accomplish it. You'll never walk in it. You'll never do that thing. But when you get God involved, what was impossible now becomes possible. See, when God gets there, red, spleas, red seas can split. The mouth of a lion can get shut. God can keep you safe in a fiery furnace. God can help feed 5,000. God can open up the eyes of the blind. He can raise the dead. He can help the mute and the deaf. Come on, clap today if you're grateful that when God gets involved, nothing is too difficult. I love Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah 31. He says, Ah, oh, Lord God, nothing is too difficult for you. You might be looking at your mouth and like, God, you don't even know how hard this is. God says, I see it, I know it, and through my power, I can accomplish it. Might be impossible for you, but it's not possible for God. When God shows up, miracles start to happen. When God shows up, things, to the wise astrologers are like, God, King, this is, this is insane. Like, are you, are you, like, we respect you, but are you crazy? No human can do this. What the king is asking for is impossible. Only a God can do that. Have you come to the place in your life where you realize that if less God gets involved, you have no shot? Jesus says in John 15, apart from me, you can do nothing good. If God doesn't get involved in your career, if God doesn't get involved in your finances, if God doesn't get involved, where are the single people at? If God doesn't get involved, you're going to be single for three more years. Come on. We need Jesus. We, you, I know you, you need Jesus. But what you need to cook in, he said, wow, so did I. And, um, but what you, what you need to factor in, what you need to factor in is that when God shows up on the scene, and this is why Daniel, God has placed Daniel in this scenario is because for the world it's impossible. But Daniel has been placed strategically by God for such a time as this. So all the wise men say this is impossible. Watch what Daniel says. Daniel comes before the king. And let me just read it. Look at the next part. It says in verse 16, at, at this, Daniel went into the king and asked for time. Everybody say time. He asked for time so that he might interpret the dream. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends. These are their old names, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. It's, it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery. Write down point number two. Turn to God in times of adversity. This year you might have some craziness thrown your way. We don't, listen, I cannot promise you that this year is going to be easier than last year. I cannot promise that. What I can promise is that in your life, there are going to be times when you rejoice and there's going to be times when you weep. And we have made a commitment in our spiritual community that we're going to rejoice with those that are rejoicing and we're going to weep with those that are weeping. If you're doing good, we're going to clap. If you're doing bad, we're going to cry. Being a part of a church is beautiful because you got people. Listen, we made a decision from the beginning. We're not going to fight with you. We're going to fight for you. So if you're a part of Zoe, if someone's doing great, ball out. Let's get in their Tesla with them. We're going to get some in and out. If they're doing bad, let's show up at the hospital and pray for their sick child. In times of adversity, don't turn to a bottle this year. In times of adversity, don't get stuck on an app. In times of adversity, don't go to some, 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 some distraction, some booty call, something that's going to help you for one. Oh, that was for somebody. I saw seven people go like this. That's a word in season. A lot of us, when things get hard, we turn to what's comfortable. What if this year was the year that you turned to God rather than what's distracting? In times of adversity, the question is pending, what will you turn to? Because a lot of you are like, I just want to Netflix. I just want to, I just want to go home and get in my cozies and, and eat ice cream. And, 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 and that's fine. That's fine. I get it. I get it. I get it. We all go through hard times. Right now, just a heads up, right now, every one of your heroes today is getting punched in the face. 
Every one of us. Don't let the good outfits and the, and the singing fool you. Everybody has their own set of issues. And you're going to go through adversity. What will you turn to? Or even a better question, who will you turn to? You know? And so here's Daniel, and he goes to the king, and what's the first thing he asks for? This, 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 some of us need to understand the power in this question. The first thing he says to the king is, hey, sir, I really want to interpret it. Do you mind? Do you think you can give me time? Have you noticed yet about God in your life? He is never in a rush. He, he, it's an old cheesy saying, but let me just say it. He's never too early, and he's never too late. He's an on-time God. And the king, the king grants this request because Daniel says, I need, to, I need time. The reason why we're spending 21 days in prayer and fasting is because we're not going to give God a day. Okay, God, you got a day. You got 24 hours. Speak to me. No, God, I'm going to give you time. I'm going to give you space. I'm going to allow you to speak into my soul and speak into my sin patterns and speak into my troubles and speak into my sorrows. I'm going to let you heal me. God needs more time with you. Can I get some, sir, do you mind if I, I just need a little bit of, I just need some time, sir. The king's like, all right, you got time. The first thing he does is get his time. The second thing he runs home and he gets with his bros and he goes, guys, we must pray. See, I don't want you this year to be praying by yourself. I want you to get to crew, get some friends, get some spirit, get in a connect group. Get with some people that are like, come on, we're going to pray together. Put down the phone, put that, turn off the TV. Let's pray right now. We need people in our lives that are quick to pray. We, 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 need, we need people that will stop apologizing. Hey, I, I don't want to be spiritual here, but do you guys mind if we pray? Just pray. Just go to God. Hey, turn everything off. Let's grab hands. Let's plead for God's mercy in this situation. Turn to God in adversity. Da Daniel's saying, I know we've had some wins, but that doesn't mean we're going to win again. We are still, still desperate. We are still dependent upon the goodness and the grace of God. Daniel turns, turns to his boys and he says, come on, guys, let, let's, let's grab hands and pray. Could you imagine? You, Daniel's like, okay, guys, let, this is so church. This is church terms here. Maybe he's like, okay, guys, let's just pray. Let's popcorn style. If you didn't grow up in church, you never heard this gross saying before. Popcorn style is like whenever you're feeling it, just pop right in. You know, just, just pop, just no order, just popcorn style. And then if it's really bad in a church meeting with really spiritual people, someone will pray. And then another person will be like, I just want to piggyback off that. It's like, at Zoe, no piggybacks. <laughs> just in 2023, death to the piggyback. <laughs> and they grab hands and they come together. You know, you know, one of the verses that I hope that you and I become is the Bible says in Proverbs, a brother is born for adversity. You need some people that you can count on if you're in the hospital. You need some people that you can tell, I'm going through the worst season of my life. The, 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 the question is not if people know you. The question is, people do, do people know the real you? The real you. And they say, thank, thank you, sir. I'm so grateful for the time. Thank you. Thank you. We, we're going to go to God. And then he got with his guys. He says, come on, guys, let's pray. Do you have friends do you have family that you could pray with this this zoe does not exist so you can come to a service zoe exists so you can plug into a community of people that are like-minded and like-hearted that will be quick to pray come on let's pray let's pray come on you got a sick kid come on let's pray you, you're dealing with 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 an offense come on let's pray right now Turn to God in adversity. So they turn, these guys turn and they, and they, and they pray popcorn style and, 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 they, and they finish praying. And, and, the, and then the Bible says, if you read it, then God reveals to Daniel, he interprets what the dream is. Watch, watch this next scripture. Look at this. This is, this is now in verse 19. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven saying, praise be the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are His. He changes the times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. 
He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells within him. I thank and praise you, God, my ancestors. You have, ma have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what he asks of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. Write down number three today. The greater the miracle, the greater the praise. This is a miracle. Daniel's like, oh, am you. Whoa. You answered it. Oh, my gosh, how great is God. See, when you get a miracle in your life, when you get a financial miracle or you get a soul miracle or a relationship miracle, you can't just be like, all right, I'm just going to keep living. No, it will result in worship and glory and thanksgiving to God. Did you hear what he said? He says, oh, God. He says, you change things. You remove things. You know things. You give things. You reveal. It's all about you. It's not about me. See, I'm believing for your life that you'll start to live living for the glory of God. That there, that, that, that there will not be weak praise. Weak praise to me is praise that stays in your mind. You cannot praise God from your mind. You've got to get it out of your mouth and into the air and the atmosphere to say, I bless the Lord. I worship your name. I extol you, God. There's no God like my God. He's, he's praising God. See, it went from possibility over to prayer, and now there's praise. See, your prayer life results in your praise life. The more you pray about things, the more God starts to do things. But I don't want to be, you ever, you ever hear the story about Jesus and the ten lepers? There's this one story in the, in the Gospels. Jesus, these ten lepers come to him. And they say to Jesus, um, clearly we need your help. Can you please heal us of this leprosy? And so Jesus says, yep, go show yourself to the priest, you'll be good. And the Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. When they get to the priest, all ten are healed. Nine of the ten, 90% went out, they went to Applebee's in the club that night. One of the ten came back to Jesus to give praise and thanks to God. And when he came back, Jesus looked at the one, he said, hold up, wasn't there we're busy these days. I can't keep track of it all. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't there 10 of you? And the one goes, yeah. And he said, man, isn't that something? See, most of us, we get our, we get our miracle. We get our miracle and we're like, I'm done with church. Because I got what I needed. Isn't it amazing when you hit rock bottom, how quick we are to turn to God. But when you're on the mountaintop of success, you're like, I'm good. Not Daniel. What did Daniel say? He said, the same passion I had when I was desperate and needed God will be the same passion I use to worship and praise God. There will not be a difference in desperation to break through. <laughs> see, we, 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 we will see God do more in our life when we live a lifestyle of praise. I thank you, God. You know, you promote, you sit down, you raise up, you reveal. It's all about you. It's not about me. Look at this verse, Psalm 126. I love this scripture so much. It says, our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. And the Lord has done great things for us. And we are filled with joy. Can I just say to you this year, the Lord's going to do great things among us. And the Lord's going to do great things in you. There's going to be the we thing and there's going to be the me thing at the same time. Zoe Church is going to win and you're going to win. The Lord's gone, done great things among us. The Lord has done great things for us. God's going to let this house win and your house win. And the more we win, the more we praise. The more he breaks through, the more we worship. The more he does what only he can do, the more we ought to have our hands raised and our voice loud saying, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I don't want to get caught this year with alligator arms. You ever see someone in worship that right here? It's like, okay. Or you ever see someone throw frisbees? Just kind of like, there's just. But you see somebody in church with the ugly face? I always think when I see somebody worshiping, what did God bring them out of? Because you don't arrive at that kind of praise just by coasting through life. You've been through some stuff. God's helped you. you got a testimony. you got some deliverance. you got some, some worship to give because of, because of who God has been. I love this. Daniel, he, he, he goes to the king. He said, we need some time. 
If you'll grant us some time, sir, if you just give us some time, we'll, we'll pray and we'll go to our God. Your, your, your boys are right. You know that. You know that, King. Your boys are right. No man can do this. I can't do it, but, but, but my God can. And then you come on, guys, pray, pray. Come on, please. And in the nighttime, God downloads to Daniel and interprets the vision. And the moment he gets it, he doesn't post it on social media. He worships his God. See, my, my concern is are you quick to tell others or are you quick to praise God? Because our relationship with God matters, it matters most. And so, and so Daniel goes and he interprets, he interprets the dream. And uh, it, it, it's not favorable if I'm being honest. It's not, a, it's not like one of those dreams. Like Daniel didn't walk in the office like, I've got good news. He walked in and he's like, okay, this could go bad. And he interprets the dream to the king, worship team. You can come join me. And I love what happens and transpires here at the end of chapter 2. Because to me, it brings in clarity what I want to live my life like. Let's read here just a few more verses and then we'll, we'll be done for the day. It says in verse 46, Then King Nebuchadnezzar, he fell prostrate before Daniel. And he paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. And the king said to Daniel, surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. And he made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Write down the last point today, our heart's desire is for your renown. Our heart's desire is for your renown. Daniel walks in the office and he's like, hey Neb, how you been? Um, you might want to sit down for this one. Uh, I don't know how to break it to you, man. I'm just going to shoot it to you straight. Yeah, the dream's big, bro. Um, so what you saw in summary was basically God saying to you that he's going to break your kingdom in pieces. And you will not be ruler or reign anymore. But there's a time that's coming when God's kingdom is about to reign. And of his rulership, there will be no end. And his government will never be put to rest. So just a heads up, Nebuchadnezzar, your days are numbered. If I was Daniel, I would have been with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego pregame huddle like, okay, boys, I'm going in. Pray for your boy. I'm going to tell him straight. I'm going to shoot it to him in a way he doesn't want to hear it. He goes and tells him, and the king doesn't shoot him or fire him. The king worships God. He falls prostrate before Daniel, and he says, Oh, Daniel, your God is the one true God. Surely it's your God. None of my guys could figure it out, but your God told you, and I think he's right, and my days are numbered, so I must... Worship the true God. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live for myself. I don't want to live for my glory or my renown or my name or my present age. I want to live for Jesus. And the king falls down and he's like, oh, Daniel, Daniel, what have I done? Your God is the one true God. We had a bunch of kids, a bunch of people at our house the other night. We were having fun watching the, the Georgia TCU game. Georgia just, you know, whatever. TCU, we're so sorry. Uh, that was a bad trip to L.A. for y'all. And, um, and my, my seven-year-old loves screens. He's a screen guy. He's a, it's, big, it's a whole thing in my house. And he's asking for a screen. And his mother asked him, what do you love the most, son? What is screen? Do you love screens more than me? Top five things in your, in your, in your life, son. What do you love? What are your top five loves? And my son's smart. He starts working five to one. And when he gets to three, he's like, friends. Number two, family. And he gets to the last one. He said, and the number one thing I love the most in my life are all the gods. And we go, son, what did you say? My number one love is I love all the gods. His brother gets really mad. Maverick, we don't love all the gods. There's only one God. 
And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> My number one love is the only one true God. And the kitchen starts to celebrate. The only one true God. There's only one. And it's that guy that we're living for. And I pray purpose in your life. That why do you get up in the morning? What are you living for? Why do you exist on this earth? God has a plan. God has a purpose. And it's not so you live for you. It's so that you live for Him. I'll oh, stand to your feet. Let me read one last scripture. Isaiah 26 verse 8. Yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desire of our hearts. Let me read it again. Look up at the screen. All eyes up on the screen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Everybody say yes. Everybody say Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. May our reply to God, whatever he asks of us this year, we're already saying yes. Like when the angel showed up to Mary and said, just a heads up, I know you're a virgin, but you're going to carry the Son of God. Her reply to the angel was, yes, Lord. Lord, I don't know what you're going to do this year, but my response to you and my response to your word is, yes, Lord, be it done according to your servant. Yes, Lord, be it done according to Zoe Church. Yes, Lord, be it done according to my life. Somebody clap and thank God. If you're reply is already yes yes Lord walking in the way of your laws walking in your truths walking with you I'm gonna walk with Jesus I'm gonna be on the strand walking with Jesus I'm gonna be in my neighborhood walking with Jesus this year I'm walking with Jesus and I'm not gonna walk from a distance I'm telling you this year I'm gonna walk closer to God I'm gonna walk with him intimately I'm gonna walk with God closely I will not follow my God from a distance I'm gonna follow God with all my heart soul mind and strength how about you yes Lord yes 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 Yes, whatever you want, whatever you want to do, whatever you say, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to give. Yes, Lord, yes, my response to you in advance. If you're wondering, I said yes to the, to the God. Yes, Lord, walking in your truths. We wait for you. We wait for you. We wait for you, Daniel. King, can you give me some time? Do you think Daniel went home and played Xbox? He went home and he went on airplane mode and he waited on God. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, God. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, but you do. Yes, Lord, walking in your truths, we wait on you. And the desire of our heart is for your name and for your renown. I just want to let you know, if you want to live a great life, live to make God the big deal, not you. If you want to have the adventure of a lifetime, live for the renown of the name of God, not the renown of the name of you. And when you get swept up into that narrative and swept up into that life, all of a sudden you get excited because you realize it's not about me, it's all about God. Come on, give Him a praise today if you're grateful for who God is. Come on, if you believe in our God and you know that God is good, I want you to lift a hand to heaven. I want you to praise Him like you've never praised before. We worship you today. God, we praise you. We thank you for who you are. Hallelujah.